Welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and in the past when you wanted to do motion capture you had to wear a kind of complex suit and it was a process that involved quite a lot of effort and then Radical came along and all you needed was a video of a person and you could get motion capture data out of it thanks to an AI and something similar now is happening for photogrammetry. The idea of photogrammetry is that you take photos of real world objects and automatically recreate them in 3D. And in the past, lots and lots of uh, photos were necessary for that. Here's an example I've created in Meshroom, which is a free and open source photogrammetry software. Link is also in the description. And you see that a lot and lot of photos I had to take. Each one of those virtual cameras is replicating one of those photos. And now AIs are coming along and claim they can do this with one photo only. Kicking it off with Trellis, which you can run locally, but here it's running on Hacking Face in a um, space by Inno AI, and link is in the description. Currently, you can still try it for free. I'll put this one image here, and it will uh, analyze it and automatically remove the background and then I click generate. And you might wonder why this can generate an entire 3D object when it has only one um, image. I mean, it cannot see the back of the seashell. And here the idea is that the AI is more or less hallucinating what the back side could look like. And it's creating a 3D model from the, yeah, quite limited information. And this is the interesting thing because it actually works. Here's the result. Now let's click Extract GLB to extract the scan from this model here. Now for a commercial solution that also happens to be the sponsor of today's video, Meshi AI. I click on New Model and select Image to 3D. And then I drag this over just like in Trellis. After a while, it will tell you what it's seeing on this image. Let's call this seashell. Fortunately, this uh, is only the name. This has nothing to do with what will be generated, which I will do now. Meshi hasn't generated one, but four meshes I can choose from, and I'm going with this one here. You know, I can select um, how the mesh should actually be generated. So it's going to do some kind of a Remeshing, and here in the pro plan, I can even select the topology, which is quad in my case. Highly preferring quad over triangles because that later on allows us to add things like a subsurf modifier. And I think medium poly count should be enough. And now let's also generate a texture, and I click on confirm, and here is the result. Let me also check the topology. And this is looking pretty good. And also the texture is looking pretty good, especially when you compare this with Trellis, where we have a lot of shadow spec and this is completely shadow free. So this seems to look like a really, really good albedo map. And now let's download this for Blender, which we can do here with download, read reads, dot blend and I click on download. Here I have all three models in Blender for comparison. First on the left, the ground truth. That is what came out of Meshroom, the photogrammetry solution where I gave him hundreds of filters and thus this almost perfect solution, which has a few downsides. Like on the bottom, I still have the piece of the table I still have to remove and it the bounce lights from the table and the shadows, they are like baked in to the object. and this is something that also happened over here with the trellis result, which for some reason also seems to have shadows baked into the texture, which is something a bit unfortunate. And also, if you take a look at the topology, it's not very good. And also it uh, didn't do a very good job at imagining the other side of the seashell. Now, here is the seashell by Meshi and 
and is um, a lot better, I think, because it gives me no baked in shadows. So if you look at it around it completely, this is like a perfect albedo map. And the model is, I think, also uh, better in creating a believable other side. So this is the one side of the model, this is the other side of the model. And I think this is overall a very believable result for a seashell. And the icing on the cake is actually the topology. Right now, if I go to edit mode, it looks like it's all triangles. But if I do a three and twist the quads, I will get back the original quad based topology. And now, since this topology here is so nice, this retopo step, they have integrated it, wouldn't it be cool if we could uh, do this retopo also with our own models? And yes, there is a way. Unfortunately, Meshi does not allow to upload blend files, so we have to export this as OBJ, which I already did. And now, let me go here and show you a cool hack. I go to workspace, AI texturing, now that it's uploaded, I click continue, and the cool thing is, even if this uh, is actually meant to texturize our radium upper model, which we will do in a moment, we can also use this to retopologize. And this is here up here in Remesh. I uh, make it a load poly count and let's say quad based topology. And let me click confirm. And the cool thing is, this is totally free. If you have a um, pro account, you can just do this whenever you want because here um, Meshi uses this kind of virtual currency, those credits. And um, zero credits for retopology, which is really cool. Here's the result with the new topology. And this is how the topology was before. Super dense. And here now, really nice remeshing. And the cool thing is that it even worked, even though the um, model of the sand has some special, um, it has some, there, there are some problems with the mesh. There are errors in the mesh. They are in there on purpose for the developers to test the algorithms. And if something works on Suzanne, then it's quite robust. So obviously, meshy is kind of robust. And now let's texture this. And let me call, I will have to give this a um, prompt. This will take a while. Here is the result. And isn't this an interesting interpretation of Susan by the AI. What I really find interesting is that it managed to place the mouth right. So you see here that uh, Susan, the mouth, it's comically uh, far down, um, almost uh, directly at the chin. And then there's this huge gap up until the nose. And most AIs usually failed uh, to match this one, this weird dent here with the mouth. And um, I'm really surprised that um, that Meshi has managed um, to get this one little detail right. One thing where Meshi really comes in handy is when you want to capture buildings, because unless you have a drone, the roof quite mild, most of the time is a problem. And sometimes you, there is a backside of the building, you don't have access to it. And for Meshi, that is okay, because it, it takes only one photo, so it doesn't even know what the backside is, so it creates it from its own idea of the building. And the result is usually actually pretty good, even though, and that is something I have to remember, it's not a 101, 100% accurate res per representation. So for example, here, this rounded part here of the building, here it's gone. And in general, this is more like an, an idea of the building. It has the same style, it has the same look, um, it has roughly the same proportions, but it's not uh, the same. It's something new and it's something uh, that resembles it uh, pretty closely, but it's something on its own. So it's not the same, that's something you have to remember. But when it's okay, when you only need the style of something, or that the general idea is a 3D model, then Meshi and the other one sort solutions are the way to go. Another thing Meshi can do is rig 3D models and animate them. Let's do this with this chair here. I'm clicking on rig. And now you already see that it has support for bipeds and quadrupeds. 
and I'm selecting the quadruped and place those markers here. Here is the result. It looks pretty interesting and pretty Disney-ish. And uh, it's really nice that it works so well, even though the chair is very much different from a dog. And unfortunately, uh, there's only currently only one animation for quadrupeds. If this was a biped, we could have select quite a lot of them. And now let me hit download to download this and get it into Blender. Unfortunately, no .blend a here, so I'm selecting GLB and I'm hitting download. When importing a model that has been rigged with Meshi into Blender as a GLB, you have to set the bone shape size to a very small number like 0 0.01 because otherwise they will be really big. And I'll also turn on this here and it import shield here. Well, here is the chair and here it is with materials and here you can see it walking and those bone shapes here are for the rig. So if you go to the pulse mode, we can change things using those bones. And one thing you should keep in mind is go to edit mode, F3, trust the quads will clean up the meshing models after importing into Blender, which means now with this nice quad based topology, we can even add a subsurf modifier to smooth this out even further. If you got intrigued by Meshi, there's a link in the description that you can use to sign up either for a free or a pro account. The free account comes with roughly 10 creations per month and you have to tell everybody that you're using Meshi. The pro account you can use a lot more. It comes with perks like the remeshing I've shown you and um, the AI texture editing. And also, if you subscribe to the pro account, a bit of the money goes to our channel, thus you would support us, Blender Diplom. And there's other ways you can support us as well. For example, you can subscribe to our channel, you can ring the bell, or you can like us on social media. And as always, please do try this at home.